Mr. Adams, you clever poet. A true genius at work. Oh, well, hello there. Uh, I guess I should say the inevitable. I apologize for the lack of episodes, but um, I have been a bit busy. But you know what? This is a very special event here on RuleThirds.com. A very special 10 out of 10 days of content. So, it is my responsibility to give my fair share. So, on that note, we are reaching another milestone for the show. Our first ever composer. Should make up for some lost time, I assume. So, on that note, my name is Professor Larry Freed, and welcome back to yet another exquisite episode of The Greats. A film's musical score is very easily compared to a dish with spices. Sure, the dish doesn't need the spices to be a good dish, but then again, the spices make the dish taste twice as interesting, for better or for worse. You see, while silence is deadly, music has an incredibly important role in establishing specific tones for specific scenes. In fact, for some movies, the music does really define the entire movie as a whole. And that would be the case for today's subject, who has managed to successfully craft many of the eerie and eccentric sounds you hear in most of the films by a certain name you may have heard of. Mr. Tim Burton, perhaps? The subject for today would, of course, be Mr. Danny Elfman. Born on this day in 1953, Danny Elfman was born into a Jewish family, with his father being a novelist and his mother being a teacher. His life really begins when he turns 18, though, when he and his brother, Richard, travel to France to perform musical theater. Eventually, Elfman would travel to Africa, absorbing the culture of Ghana and their high-life musical genre, which would go on to inspire his later work. Here's a small taste. See you about right. Papa, come answer. Thomas. Yeah. Oh, the one must be on God. Oh, so they... I don't know. Makes sense to me. After contracting malaria, he moved back to the United States, which would lead to his involvement in the popular cult rock band Oingo Boingo. Originally entitled The Mystic Knights of Oingo Boingo, the group was originally a musical theater troupe formed by Danny's brother, Richard. However, Richard decided to shift gears and go into filmmaking, so he left the band to Danny. After scoring the band's farewell film for the old format, entitled The Forbidden Zone, Elfman redefined the group as a rock and ska band. Elfman would go on to be the group's frontman until Halloween 1995, when the band performed for the final time to a sold-out audience. The band gained quite a cult following, mostly for their eccentric punk style, and would show the world the skill behind Elfman's musical abilities. Before that, however, in 1985, Mr. Elfman would meet the one and only Tim Burton, who was a big fan of Oingo Boingo at the time. Mr. Burton would ask Mr. Elfman to score his directorial debut, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. Elfman was a bit worried walking into the job, seeing as he never had proper training. He was a high school dropout who never officially went to a formal school for music. Despite this, some of his friends from Oingo Boingo assisted him, and the film turned out to be a massive success. It made five times more money than its budget, Burton received the utmost praise, and the friendship between Elfman and Burton would only flourish as it continued. As many of you know, Danny Elfman would move on to score countless different films, especially those of Mr. Tim Burton. This includes Beetlejuice, Batman, Edward Scissorhands, and even non-Tim Burton works like Mission Impossible and Men in Black. But in my personal opinion, the greatest score that Danny Elfman ever made is the one where he lends his vocal talents. I am of course discussing the one, the only, The Nightmare Before Christmas. Ah yes, the classic story of Jack Skellington bringing Christmas to Halloween Town is an instant classic from start to finish. The devious music, the complex animation, the wonderful lyrics, and especially the interesting complex behind Jack Skellington's character all make the film's brilliance shine. 
It's also worth pointing out that Danny Elfman provided his vocals as Jack Skellington, and it is simply divine to hear his wonderful voice. But I mean, that just scratches the surface. I mean, there's just so much to talk about. You know, instead of just me talking about all of Danny Elfman's achievements, how about you just listen to them? Seems a bit more effective. So, enjoy this montage of some of Danny Elfman's greatest hits. Mr. Elfman is still composing music to this very day. Honestly, that's incredibly impressive. The man essentially defined the sound of Tim Burton's career and became the best in the business when it came to upbeat, abstract, eerie music. He really created his own sound, and only a few composers can really achieve that in just one lifetime. Sure. Some great composers are able to define a series of films through a theme song, maybe. But Danny Elfman was able to define himself through his music. And I respect that a lot. And so, on that note, I propose a toast to Mr. Danny Elfman. A man who, like Jack Skellington, touched the sky and left us some stories to tell. Music to listen to? Eh, tomato, tomato. As always, my name is Professor Larry Freed, reminding you to always strive for greatness. Thanks for watching. Hello everyone, this is Larry. I really hope you enjoyed this episode of The Greats on Danny Elfman. I love his music, I love his work, so this was an easy and fun episode to make. Uh, I just want to remind all of you that we are currently in the middle of our 10 out of 10 days of content. We got tons of awesome stuff going on the site throughout the week, so be sure to stay tuned and keep your eyes peeled to RuleThirds.com. Thank you guys so much, and have a fantastic rest of your day.